Pleased to meet you, Lance. This is William Longfellow, here to earn my pilot wings and absorb your advice, which is to... Land! If I must, Lance. Now, today's vehicle du jour is the hang glider, and I'll be using that first, largely because if I mess up, I want to be able to take another take without losing too much progress. The hang glider is the trickiest vehicle. Now, I did play this game when I was younger, and I'm taking liberties with the word play here because I, I plugged in the cartridge and the controllers and fiddled around a little bit and saw the demo screen, but I didn't understand any of the gameplay. I must have been four or five at the time, and I didn't understand the light plane, and I certainly didn't understand skydiving, which is a bit harder. I think I understood the manual, though, by the time I was five or six. The, I was a better reader than a video gamer. Maybe. But even now I have trouble with the hang glider. This is one of those levels where I can sort of fudge it by taking a very particular strategy. I always turn sort of the same way. I always end up on this platform where I can have a bonus chance. Really getting to the point where I was able to do that consistently took a lot of effort. A lot of practice runs. And now we're treated to another Birdman episode. And this one is... the controls are rather similar to hang gliding. The trick here is, unlike in hang gliding where you sort of press up and down uh, as you go up, and well you press down to go up as you go up and you press up to go down as you go down you do the reverse in this to get the most distance and here well I've already passed the 50 mark but I went on long enough to probably get 70 or 75 there and Lance is very happy though not completely shocked like Tony was in our first episode let's see if we can shock him today I'll be taking the light plane for a ride let's go Now, Shirley spreads out her rings throughout the three courses. Lance puts them all here. That's a decent course. I guess it's the pilot wings equivalent of the scenic route. There's not too much scenery, a, a pretty background, I guess. Not unusually lush. I guess there's a charm to a sort of minimalist 3D game. After all, I am playing this after I play Super Mario Kart. Those two games are big on the Mode 7 and represent early attempts to make games in three dimensions. And maybe it's because I grew up with them that I sort of like this style, but there's something, there's something calming about all these horizontal lines, I think. Anyways, there's really not much to say about this level, just to go through rings. It's pretty easy to play. I really don't know how I didn't understand at least the light plane when I was younger, but I was a pretty oblivious kid. There are areas that I understood way too much. I entirely missed that ring. The microphone is in my face, actually, so I'm having trouble seeing these rings. But anyways, there were areas in which I was pretty competent in terms of games. I beat Super Mario. level of this game, and I think my competences are about the same in both games nowadays as they were when I was much younger. Now this is the first level where wind really starts to make a big difference here. You can probably tell the wind is dragging me to the left there. And what I would normally do is I would position myself to land on the, the runway. What I would do is I would get myself straight towards the runway in my angle, but a little bit to the right, because the wind will push me towards the runway without rotating me, and then time my landing so that I get right in the middle strip. But today I feel like taking a little bit of a joy ride, so I hope you enjoy the trip. I didn't bring along any airline crew. I 
guess I could try to go for some Seinfeld. The comedic chops are not my thing. And here the game predictably yells at you to stay inside the course until it finally determines, okay, he's off the map. Let's dock him all the points possible. And here we see a very angry Lance. You know, maybe I should have landed. That was his one instruction after all. And finally, we take the rocket belt. And this runs pretty much like the last rocket belt exercise. So now we're touching these thinner beams rather than bigger rings. And the wind plays a bit of a role here too. If you miss a bar, you have to judge the wind and your momentum to get back to touch it. Fortunately, the time is well, very generous. You won't get docked for time unless you spend a very long time here. If you do it just as I did, you'll be done with them in less than 30 seconds. And you have a lot of time to position yourself just right on the target. Which is what I'm going to be doing. Get into LR mode. Now the problem here is... Making sure I don't drift too much. I'm starting to drift to the left. It's very important to keep your control. Keep in mind of altitude. That'll kill you. If you're not paying enough attention, no, I'm <laughs> doing a very poor job here. Really, the rocket belt should be easier than this. But there are times where I just sort of dawdle around. Very poor time of things. Let's see, there I'm drifting to the left. I don't know. I'm gonna land soon. There we go, a great landing. Now I hope I got all all points for this. Oh no, I missed a few. You don't get to see Lance all bug-eyed here. But maybe in my bonus episode I'll, I'll show him freaking out when I get 100 points on that episode. And 245 is more than enough to pass, even though I did not complete the light playing course at all. And here I earn a, C lic or a silver license. Wait, so B is above A, and silver is above B. All right. You know, maybe I should just Wikipedia, like, flying licenses and see if this has any corollary whatsoever to anything in real life. But anyways, that's it for the episode. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you come back to watch the next one. See ya.